Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. This is React, a uh, little TV DVD. How you doing? And on the other I am going to try to get through this Love and Marriage Huntsville recap. If I don't get to any more of my recaps until like Wednesday or Thursday, it's because I have been sick. sick. Just got out of the hospital. And so I'm trying to do this one at least because I still just need to, you know, keep up with my content. You know, to make sure that YouTube don't forget about me, right? Because I'm already not quite yet monetized. Again, I only need about a thousand hours to get monetized. So please, please, please support by liking, subscribing, and um, sharing this video. Um, I'm going to try not to spend too much time on it because, I mean, it was a good episode. But, you know, it wasn't something that I can just do a lot of commentary on. I, you probably won't get my impressions. <laughs> I might do a little mail here and there, but the rest of it takes, like, energy to do, and I just don't have a lot of that to give. But the episode opens up. Let's get it started. The episode opens up with where it left out the last time with Sonny and Moses coming out because um, Carlos decided he wanted to introduce them as a couple on the show. Now, Carlos, I don't know what angle you had headed for here, but I'm pretty sure it ain't good. And the thing about it is I always believed Carlos when he said that he that he was the producer that gave um, uh, Phaedra that Smokey G, you in on uh, the Real Housewives of Atlanta. I'm beginning to believe that he did. He likes to pull out these types of surprises. And he could do what he wanted to do because this right here is his show, right? So even Mel is surprised. Destiny, Destiny, Destiny. Listen to me carefully. <laughs> Mel may just not be that helpful you think she is because she wasn't on board with this. At least, uh, you know how y'all say she faking all that? It seemed like she was genuinely surprised to me. Yeah, I didn't see any fakeness about this. So, baby Carlos throws in that dig that um, Moses showed up for uh, Sonny, but he didn't show up for this. Now, I'm just going to tell y'all like I tell the rest of them, as my dad used to say. This man has an agenda. <laughs> Period. Dot. And I'm not going to go all into detail about what that agenda is, because I don't know what it is, but it's there. So the word on the street is, according to Destiny, because she's the word on the street, she says that Sonny was telling her to leave Moses alone. Do I believe that? Absolutely. Because, do and do I believe Sonny when she said that she didn't know him to be with Destiny? You sound a fool. Because how was even that little interaction that they had on the phone that day even filmed if you didn't produce it? Remember, we know that you were her producer at the time. So that little time that he was on the screen, you orchestrated the boo. You knew something of him if you didn't know everything of him. You're lying. And now it's beginning to make me think that you were sabotaging her all along because you probably were the producer that said that she was difficult to work with. And this trash and low-down, big-headed heifer, have, look at me. Going off on the girl, and I said I wasn't going to do all that because I've been sick. But anyway, this low down, big headed heifer, roadmap head heifer. Now we have another hay on along our hands. Only hers look more like a Klingon or a predator, like I said the last time. N not the kind that does the molestation, but the kind that was in the movie. Child. This right here, this girl right here, I ain't feeling. Then she, she, then she arrogant and snotty with it. You know, I wasn't expecting the booth. Then what was you expecting? And then Moses having a nerve to say that, that him and Destiny never did really break up. So you left the relationship in the air and then put a ring on with somebody else. Now y'all can't see why everybody dragging this big head of hell for and, baby, when I say it's an agenda behind this low-down, dirty, good-looking man, 
Yes, he is good looking, but I still believe he's only beard handsome. So take that beard away, and I see that he could and may turn into a bugaboo. A boogaboo. Or whatever, because a bugaboo is somebody that call you all the time. Make me want to put my finger on the finger. And no, no, I can't call. And no, no, can make me move. And a bugaboo, a bugaboo. Well, he could be a bugaboo, too, because that might not be a cute person. But anyway, a booger bear under there. I put it there, boy. I just think he beard hands. And they say, well, how did y'all meet? Well, I seen to her. I seen to her at a family function. You said you seen to <laughs> Now, people talk about people in the South, and contrary to popular belief, anything below the Mason-Dixon line is considered the South, and technically, Missouri is kind of barely above the Mason-Dixon line, so... They have a mixture of the Midwest and the South, and it don't. Mm-mm. Her, dar, her, war. And people talk about the South, okay? We don't we don't say her, dar, and everywhere in St. Okay? <laughs> this man had a whole nine-day wonder from the time he just decided he wanted to let Destiny pursue her dreams and her whole divorce. Now, Nick, I almost called you something. Not Mr. Mr. Moses. You didn't know that Destiny was a uh, uh, entrepreneur when you saw her on TV. Because you are definitely an opportunist. Yes, I said what I said. I don't believe for one second that you didn't. You know, I said an agenda. I don't know what it was. But I believe, okay. A gender will encompass opportunity all up in the videos and whatnot. Now, is he a Todd? Mm-mm. Everybody is comparing the candy and Ty situation. Why don't we go lower than that and compare them more so to a marital medicine and then call us getting the idea to do, like, the sabotage of the choir and uh, sweet tea type of thing. But just remember, choir did not give what the other girl should have gave. She was like, uh-uh, nope, no, 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 no. I'm going to be nice to this one. Ty wasn't coming off of a relationship that we know of. I swear it on the street is he could be. But still, on the same token, speaking of a man that's beard helps <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. Mr. Todd. Mr. Todd uh, Tucker is, is indeed a beard handsome man. And I believe he looks decent without his beard. But I don't see this comparison because Candy had her own quarters. And she wasn't seeking quarters. And he didn't find another quarter in the direction of Candy. But I can see because that because Sonny is actually the producer. And so he decided he wanted to cast a wide net. That's what I'm saying. He didn't get a phone number until July. There go mail. Missing mail at that moment, right? She was like, oh, that sounds like a little, oh, I'm able to do it a little bit. That sounds like a little gray area. And I don't do gray areas. That's why I got on black and white. <laughs> <laughs> Start dating in August. When did you and Destiny broke up? Never. So you just good at leaving people hanging like that? Could have said something too. So Sunday jumps in and does most of the talking. At this point, yeah, yeah, well, well, you know, you know, I, uh, you know, I tried to call her, you know, I let her know that I had just snicked up on her man because I'm a sneaky snake and I look like a predator, and the predator did have what it looked like to be snakes in his head, so yeah, so this fits. Mm-hmm. Carlos, I know now you talk about unlockable people, this ain't a villain right here. Because Kenya Moore is the villain with class. I always let, let people know. That can, you know, come out to be likable. This lady ain't likable. Mm-mm. Not even a little bit. She's snide. And a, and a little bit, you know. For somebody that, you know, went up and snaked up on her, not even her friend, husband, quote-unquote, uh, boyfriend, <laughs> you, you seem a little... Kind of, mm, I don't know, off-putting. 
perfect word. So Destiny was long distance, and this is a horrible thing because we knew that Destiny lived in Huntsville, and I knew that I lived in St. Louis. So what was the issue there? If you had an issue with being in a long distance relationship, shouldn't it have been something you told her up front because you knew what it was? You knew she lived in Huntsville, and you knew your black ass lived in in, in uh. St. Louis. What, what is the miscommunication there about a long-distance relationship? Now, when you're in a long-distance relationship, you stay a lot in a relationship, if, that, if, that, if, if I'm not mistaken. So that person does deserve a courtesy, and you telling them that you no longer want to be with them. And, and like Mel said, and what is the right woman? Since you said that, you know, Destiny wasn't the right woman. For, oh, she's standing right here. Oh, head and all. Head and shoulders above all the rest. I got you. I got you, Moses. I understand. Everybody wants somebody that's head and shoulders above the rest. Yeah, destiny uh, going and prioritizing her career over this man right here. That's the problem. Because I know how to, I knows how to prioritize my man, Mr. That's what she sounded like, straight off the day on plantation. This here relationship is based off of love, God, and building wealth together. What do you do, Moses? Now, what's your job again? <laughs> say what? Oh, you didn't say that. Building together? You and Moses going to build together? For real, for real? Girl, what are you building? That's what I want to know. Because I understand you got some tuba movies out. What does he do again? Okay. You know, I'm questioning the connection here. I mean, because you know how to prioritize your man. And you seem to be ambitious yourself. You're going to put all your eggs in his basket and put him as a priority and then forget your tube movies? Hmm? Because that sounds like what Destiny was doing. Destiny was trying to get my daddy back open for the re 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 at the end of the day, I ain't steal nobody hubbing. I ain't break up nobody happy home. We are married, and that's what it is. Well, that's what it is, big-headed. Then expect the backlash that you get. See how that works? <laughs> and besides all that, you was a side chick anyway because he was dating several women. So what did that make you? Remember you said when you met him. So that means that when you started getting serious with him in August, did you did he release all the other women or were all of you sides and nobody was actually a man and he decided to marry you because you were a producer? Hmm. Girl, you didn't think, did you? Because you know how to pour all tie your man. May I say, it needs to be a conversation that needs to be had. I don't know what's going on, but you seem to be very angry. Well, she's angry because nobody in the public, now mom and daddy and the rest of them, they might be supporting this bullshit. But the public, the general public, is not. Even with my total dislike of destiny. Hey, I don't like this. Mm -mm. And everybody's saying, I don't like, uh, people don't like Destiny because they're melamelas and they, they don't like Destiny because of me. Mm -mm. No, sir. Nope. That's not the case with me. I never liked Destiny. <laughs> I didn't like Destiny. I'm going to tell you when I stopped liking Destiny. I'll tell you the exact moment. It was during the panorama. And uh, they were doing these shows, the girls. Well, like, they were calling them sisters or something like that, sister shows or something like that. And because um, they started out with Megan Good and her sisters. And then, you know, because Mel is an only child, she has sisters, but she did it with the girls from the show. So she had Kimmy on. She had Destiny on. I never forget this. She had Destiny on. She had Letitia on. And all four of them were, you know, like, you know, like how we used to do, how it was in, in the panel, you uh, was doing everything online, okay? So we were sheltering in place. And so Mel was doing the questions and she was asking uh, uh, Destiny how she felt about shel sheltering in place. Oh, okay, it's fine. 
So what y'all gonna do? That y'all shelter in place. What you and LaBrick doing? Uh, we just together, you know, we we hanging out, trying to make the best out of this situation. All the other girls are like, girl, we trying to, you know, spice things up in the bedroom, blah, blah, blah. You know, we, we're, uh, you know, we meeting with the family that we can meet with safely, wearing our mask, and we're enjoying each other's company in that way. And see, Mel at that time did not know it, but it was going on that uh, Martel was making a baby. <laughs> so she probably making a baby at that moment while she was doing the uh, sister the sister show. But anyway, she was the driest one on the show, right? She was like, you know, her, all her answers were dry. She's rolling her eyes in the air and all this type of stuff. And then when she became an actual cast member, I was not excited about it because I knew how her personality was dry. So that that's what it is for me. I stopped liking her then. But at that time, Mel was still calling her. Now, um, Kimmy and um, uh, Letitia had gotten into it with Mel at that time about, you know, her being bougie. But she was like, I like Kimmy. Me and Tisha, we need to work out some things. But Destiny is my girl, my girl. And even in that moment on that show, she wasn't giving. <laughs> she wasn't giving at all. So I knew that that's the type of characteristics that she was going to bring to the show. So again... I just don't like Disney's personality, period, don't. So now they're about to come to us with the bullshit, right? They're about to tell us we're next thing is with uh, the three musketeers. Um, Cheese Puff, Motel, and Miss and Tyro. So Cheese Puff is telling Miss and Tyro that it's time for us to do an interve- intervention with Motel Hotel. So, Motel Hotel is giving them business. Now, mind you, they got a pop-up shop. And Mr. Cheese Puff and his messy little wife, Kimmy, they about to start this thing that they want. Marsupial. Uh, I'm about to call him Marsupial. Mr. Tyro is about to uh, build for them. Oh, boy, they trying to put that contract hat all up on top of Mr. Tyro head, ain't they? <laughs> I ain't seen him complete not one project on the show. Hey, y'all. I, have you? I mean, I just want to know. So they go to this house that Motel Hotel is built. Because, you know, he's Bob the Builder without a builder's license. Would y'all let somebody unlicensed build y'all house? Hmm, good question. Because I don't want an unlic- not an unlicensed contractor to actually build my home. They come here and fix some shit. <laughs> yes. But you build it my home from the ground up? Uh-uh. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. So they go in, and they talking to the motel, hotel, and the motel. And it's like, so what So what do we need to do? Um, Do we need to, they try to be as diplomatic as possible with motel, hotel. But can you be diplomatic with this idiot? No. Why would you try? Marsupia has said, I keep calling him Marsupia because Erica Dinero is in my head. Mr. Tyro said he wasn't going to say anything, but he did all the talking, right? You got to stop letting these people get to you. You got to stop letting these bloggers talk to you. What you doing talking to the bloggers? Well, they went low, so I decided to go out and go lower. So the lowest you were going to go was the release of X tape. Child, and indeed, that is low. With you in there pretending like you were somebody else. And, and child, you can't act that good. First of all, the plot and the scheme that was set up between you and your trout mouth girlfriend, it wasn't going to work because both of y'all are doofy. Doofy is doofus, you know. <laughs> Plural for doofus, just in case you don't know. So if you got two doofy together trying to make a child. I cannot. I cannot. And so he said, what you don't understand you know, he going to the elevated level that motel hotels go to. What you don't understand is y'all haven't been through what I'm going through right now. Did you forget Maurice divorced Cal? Because you indeed said that Kimmy was a side chick. But no, Kimmy says you a good guy, but you called her a side chick. And I just want to throw that out there. And then, Mr. Tyro says, legs and hip. He said, I've been there before. But 
I decided not to go over the ledge and get a divorce. Where were you? Were you at the brink of divorce? But why were you at the brink of divorce? Because motel hotels problem it started with him having a lifetime long affair with uh, Trout Mouth 102.5 year braces on the head. So what happened there? When you saying that you can relate, were you relating because you had an affair and y'all were on the brink of divorce and you chose not to get a divorce? I mean, you didn't add Tisha to that. You didn't say, me and Tisha didn't decide to get a divorce. You sound like a fool. See, that's what I'm talking about, about these misogynistic fools. And then, Mr. Tauro comes up with the coup de gras, don't he? Martel, you got to stop talking to the bloggers and the fans. Not the fans of the show, but he's basically talking about Melody's fans, right? They are the plurals, low lives, trashy individuals that's trying to destroy our good thing we got going on over here on Love and Marriage Huntsville when 95, even though that might be the case, and 95% of our viewership are the millimeters, forget them. <laughs> we only have 208,000 viewers, and 95% of them are the millimeters, so if we lose that demographic, we got it going on. We only have 5% fans amongst our seniors. And we can build this show off of those 5%. We got it. <laughs> Child, I can't make this shit up. That's what he's saying. Basically, in a breakdown way, because he damn sure didn't uh, give Mel her credit for bringing the boys to the yard. Because that's who does it. Say what you want to say about Mel. And contrary to popular belief, there are some people Come with me now, listen to me. There are awesome people that are not a fan of males. But the people who view this show, this show right here, with 208,000 on average viewership, <laughs> they are fans of Melody. So I don't think that it's very smart to diss these people. They already have a in a, a strong ass dislike for you and your wife. And then to call us, because I'm adding myself to it because I'm a fan of the show and not a crazed fan, but a, also a fan of Melody who can call her out when she's wrong. And I'm about to get to that when I get to Kiki. Cause I don't dis I don't agree with this whole Kiki situation. I don't agree with it. I don't agree with the unpopular opinion. I don't. <laughs> now, I'm not going to spend too much time on that scene anyway because I already said everything I have to say and what I feel. But Martel, with the, I just went low. I went low. I just know how to go low. I know how. But you've been going low, Motel. You acting like a perpetual fucking victim and you are not like I said if I call Mel out it's gonna be an other situation it will never ever 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 have anything to do with my tail because you know how like you on the playground and you go na 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 boo boo you started and na 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 boo boo I can't think of one situation and that may be off camera, but on camera, on this show, and as this show is built around social media and the social media, I haven't seen anything where she started. Motel, Motel, you got to stop starting at the end. You know, I'm not giving him the credit of starting in the middle. At the end, the end result of things. The end result is the reason why you are in a predicament. I got arrested. I got arrested. And was arrested is because you decided that you and your trap mouth girlfriend was going to get back in mail for something. All I have seen on this show is that mail has typically 
try to cordially co-parent with you. Yes, don't try to co- cordially co-parent because that's my word. Don't even do it. That's my word that I came up between me and my children, father, but we wouldn't get along. I said, look here, look here, look here, look here. I'm going to tell you something, bruh. <laughs> you will have a relationship with my girls. You got me? We clear? <laughs> so what we're going to do is cordially co-parent. I came up with that, and I have a nice little book that Motel could benefit from on how to cordially co-parent. And all I saw was Mel trying. She invites you on the trip to Disney, and you go back and tell uh, the 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 uh, try my cold cold slot corn on slot on not like corn on the cop. You go back and tell her that you know she was sick. She. And instead of keeping her damn trout mouth closed, because that's what trout do, keep their mouth open, their mouths open. Yeah, okay, uh, you know, is keep their mouths open. She was, yep, 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 and went straight to social media. I know you dub Sid. I know you real mad because he called me, called you by my name. Girl, they were already divorced. Am I correct? So this was another attempt to cordially co-parent. And here they are giving me what the women want. Women want them to say, you is wrong, and I is not wrong, because I'm smarter than everybody. I'm the smartest Negro, the smartest dumb person in the room. Yeah, right. No, I'm missing Ty Rowe then say you need to hang out with us more because you need logical fun. Say, what not that? Logical where? You wasn't that you who tried to hog tie t shirt and some duct tape in the kitchen <laughs> to keep her just cooking and, and taking care of the kids. And wasn't that you and I'm gonna keep my foot on your neck about that. Wasn't that you didn't know your kid had a peanut allergy? So to me, even as a parent who works outside the home and have your wife hog tied, taped down to a kitchen table, taking care of the kids, you should know what can actually take your child away from this earth. I'm just saying, at least that much. Is the child alert to bees? Do you know? Turtles? <laughs> I'm just saying. Know something? So in another quick scene, I'm not going to spend too much time on, we get to Kiki and Stormy. I don't know if I said that already, but I got a phone call, so I don't remember. <laughs> so we get to Kiki and Stormy, and uh, Stormy is acting like she's innocent and never has talked to the bloggers about what's going on on the show. And this is where I'm going to have my unpopular opinion about Kiki. I don't like the whole narrative of her making these decisions with Anthony Loftis because, yeah, Anthony Loftis, because she um, is a, 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 a drug abuser. I see it this way. When the, the trip to, it's a couple of things here. I know I've said them before. When the trip to Houston happened, it didn't even have to be brought up to her or suggested that she go. Right? That's how I see it. She decides that she's going to ask Nell to go. Nell says she can come. Nobody else wants her on the trip but Stormy. What's perturbing me about Stormy is that she asks as if she doesn't have a relationship with Anthony. Now, the recordings came out. And according to Anthony, he's saying, because, you know, we got three sides of the story here. We're not just going to leave his side of the story out and just take what Kiki and and Stormy is saying to be law. He said that when Kiki tried to put everything on her mom, that's when he decided to come out with the recording showing that they had had a conversation as well. Now, here's the discrepancy with me. Her mother was very angry. And to me, 
to me. Her mother did also talk to Anthony. Where is this coming from where Kiki is alive when she's, yes, yeah, she's throwing her mother on the bus in a way because she's saying that her mom did all the talking. They both been into him. Yes. I don't understand where this is coming from when she's just dumping it all off on her mother. Her mother said something. She said something. And in, in this instance, I believe that her mother was in attack mode because you have Wanda out here calling her own niece a batch. And Wanda dragging her mom's side of the family because they didn't come from the wrong side of the track. And then what ends up happening here is that they were all pitted against each other, especially Kiki and um, uh, Tisha, because they grew up very differently. It was Kiki growing up in a upper middle class neighborhood. Then you have them from the wrong side of the tracks and then these two lives commit and then you have a teenage pregnancy involved in here. Now this is where the show should not have been involved in any way. But to explain the dynamic between Kiki and Letitia this is where things go awry because Kiki is, is telling her side of the story about how, you know, now at this point, Tisha has made it and she wants to be on the show. We're not going to uh, sugarcoat anything. We know that it seemed to me that Kiki desperately wanted to be on the show, right? That's a fact. But what we're not going to do is we're not going to act like that Mel and her, even though I believe them, I believe they have a common best friend, which is Dwayne, which I really want to know. They say Dwayne don't say yet. They say Dwayne just stay out of their mess. But I really want to know is what Dwayne thinks of this, her two best friends now at odds over this damn show. Whereas they have, and it's like that sometimes. You have a common best friend, you have a best friend in common like this, and then one F's up, and <laughs> you're torn. But nobody is talking about the fact that Mel and her have that best friend in common. Everybody is just jumping to Mel's defense. I want to know the whole meat of the thing about, you know, did Dwayne encourage, you know, Kiki to ask Mel to go on the show. I mean, it was a whole lot of things that could be in that dynamic. And like I said, Mel had her, and nobody mentioned that either. <laughs> nobody. Not even the bloggers who so-called don't like her is mentioning the fact that she got something out of the deal with Kiki being on the show too. And that's why I like Kiki because for the simple fact that I do, like Stormy said, wanted her to win. But in this instance, to me, Stormy is indeed throwing her under the bus because she's saying that um, Kiki is lying and she don't understand why she's lying on her mother. Same reason why you lied on yours. <laughs> Same incident, instance. I can't do anything about my mom. No, your mom had no business, in my opinion, going on Facebook trying to defend you against the... the Quote unquote, Mel Meadows either. She puts you in a situation when you and Mel had to end up having contention. You see how that works? Same thing with Kiki's mother. Kiki's mother was simply defending her like Betty Jean was defending you. None of these people are seeing things in the bigger picture. <laughs> Especially Mel, because like I said, she knew that Kiki wanted to be on the show and she knew that she could get something out of Kiki as well, and that being her backing her up on the Marceau Chief thing, which still is out there and nobody has proof, so nobody cares. We all know if missing top row, legs and hips, walks up to Letitia with an ostentute on his arm and a bad bitch on the other arm, they are staying together. <laughs> so, who cares? If she want to be that strange-looking man's doormat, let her be that strange-looking man's doormat. I'm just saying. And he, <laughs> he 
So, like I said, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Move right along. Let's get to the next thing where, like I said before that, I don't believe all the way that Kiki is lying. I do believe her mother did get involved in it. To put it all on her mother, that was wrong. Yes, I agree with that. But I still see that she wasn't all the way wrong too. And I just hope that Kiki is able to move forward from this show. Um, we I don't think it's fair that we never did get to find out what her status was with um, the lock situation. I wish because Anthony is more of a, a salacious Tasha K type of block, right? <laughs> now, when somebody caught, yes, like I said, people do get in touch with DBT. Yeah, yeah, even though I'm small. <laughs> when people get in touch with me about certain things about these reality shows, I don't really like to go out and put that out there unless I for sure know that somebody else is reporting on it. Because I don't want to be the only one reporting on it. But like with like if it's a huge star like Diddy and I get something on that, oh baby, yeah, I'm jumping on that. But these little reality shows, uh-uh, because I know in some way that these things are happening to them in real time. We all know that Kiki and, and Letitia have fallen out. And I did briefly watch Anthony Lofty's, um, his, um, live. And he said that his goal, now he done fell out with Mel. Now it's strange to me that as long as Mel was cool with his ass, he, he didn't drop the tea on, uh, Kiki. But, uh, I never forget that that show that day is when he said, uh, if something happens to that lady and she started back using what would y'all say? What would y'all do? Would y'all go back? And even if it's y'all fame. And I said to myself, hell yeah. If somebody is jeopardizing that lady's sobriety, I don't give a damn who it is. Let's see how this plays out. And that thing, we know that we got dropping down on each other, dragging each other through the mud, got Kiki telling the show, which, by the way, they all have done. Because let's not forget who was on live <laughs> when the fight broke out between Motel and the rest of the uh, Eminem folks. The Musketeers, when they fell out about the paternity of Sugar Mom over there, at the at the re 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 reopening of Madonna. Now Mel had gotten to with several people that day. Dustiny, Letitia, in a way, because Letitia was backed off of the situation, but she was like, ain't nobody gonna jump on my mom. So all these people was in a melee that day. And who had it on film? Who had it on film? Yep, yep. Stormy and Mel. <laughs> Mel's producer had to literally tell her to get off of life. Go back and look at it if you don't believe me, because I ain't lying on nobody. I'm telling the truth. So things get leaked by all of them. Kiki is not the first person to leak something. Now, the problem with Anthony Lofty's is, is that he lets it sit back in the chamber, and then he starts to, you know, bang it off when, you know, it suits his agenda. That's the difference. Oh, by the way, they bring up about, I mean, and, and uh, Kiki cheating on each other. Boo, not necessary. Move right along. And why is Stormy acting like that has something to do with her lab livelihood? She rich, bitch. Now, you know her, you know, getting her products out there faster. But she's the bone collector now. I haven't seen her advertising that one bit of canvas beauty on this show. I had seen her with a t-shirt on. What happened to that pretty t-shirt with the afro? I would love to see one of those again. Some growth serum. You know, like when they at the house, you know, a shot. Or I tell you what, or this for a matter, for that matter. Kiki's in a bad way. According to y'all, she's still on the stuff. Why not just bring her a basket of Canvas Beauty products 
on the show. Y'all ain't done none of that. Uh-uh. Because at this point, it's Stormy's job to keep up the mess. But don't let your business get on the back burner for this show because y'all ain't getting paid according to the, the streets but $2,500. Now, I know that's not this show. I don't think they get paid that. I think that this, I think this, the six. I think the sis get anywhere from twenty to twenty five thousand dollars episode. The big six, Melody maybe forty. I don't think for one second that you know these people on this show that's had a seven year, not eight year run. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with these descriptions. <laughs> it's seven years in the game. I don't think that you know. They get paid that little twenty five hundred. Um, maybe Kik, that's what maybe what Kiki was getting paid. But Mel and the corset. Now I don't know as a couple, as couple that may get paid forty together. But I can recall, like I said a, a while back, that I remember Martell saying something when they was together that they got paid like fifty. So now I don't believe that they only get paid. Uh, um, $2,500. Now, confessional look. This is the worst I have seen Kim look in a confession. Hate, hate everything. I hate that hair. What in the time nation is going on with the hair? The big old part in the middle of her head. The part on the side of her head. Too many parts going on. And then all that hair pulled down to the front of her head. Slicked down like a little, a little mushroom. But gel down. I hate it. Now here we go with the dental with Big Head of Sun. Now mind you, Tisha has no idea that Big Head of Sun is coming. I think I need that break, a teacher. I, I, I had to see you all. Yeah, I think we got back for Africa. She just so glad that she got to go on the trip with, to Marceau, to Africa this time. He didn't leave his whole entire family behind. Girl, why don't you go by yourself? Now, this is how you get eat. That's what I'm talking about. Get eat. Go to Hawaii you by yourself. See what you do with that. Don't take any of the girls from the show, which go by yourself. Like he allegedly went to Africa the first time by himself. See how that works out. And make sure, make sure you leave him with, with the kid. And make sure you leave peanut butter there just to see if he remembers not to get a kid peanut butter. So here's Mr. Kimmy, right? She uh she bought us Sonny up. Girl, yeah, thank you, girl. Because you know you was around when I had the big C. And it was your team that really did a whole lot for me. But is it true? <laughs> Because, you know, Destiny is my girl. I need to know. Is it true? Are you married to Moses, her old man, or not? Son. Oh, it was a whole whirlwind, girl. I wasn't expecting the crowd to do what they did to me because, honey, you know, I wasn't expecting to get treated like this. The blouse, one thing. Tish, welcome to our world. Oh, girl, because I was like, if it is true, I like, damn, that twaffling call. You know, even though Destiny is our girl. I wouldn't expect you to start dating someone she was already seeing. Because I was like, that could have easily have been one our producer sleeping with one of our husband. Girl, what you worried about? More so don't cheat, remember? Now, here's where I had to agree with Kimmy for a long time. This girl is trying to defend their relationship. She going all into her and Destiny weren't friends. Who cares? The optics are still there, doofus. You were her producer. You knew personal information about her. You are lying. You didn't know that she was with Moses. Don't care what you say. And like Kimmy said, yes, you knew how it would look. That's why you decided to call her. Oh, I got real friends. I ain't saying, I'm not going to put my love life in jeopardy just for some guy that I'm just developing a friendship with. No, never. I'm going to do what I want to do. I wanted that man. That's only beard hands. And then one more time, Tisha Hissel with the trap. Uh, well, you know, 
You knew Destiny was with him at some point, according to Kim. Right? Uh, well, the point is, I'm not going to defend this anymore because I feel in love. I'm not going to defend our love. We are in a love bubble like Teresa and Lofty Louis, and ain't nobody going to pop my love bubble. You hear me, half us? And then she said, well, I just never thought of you as that trifling type of female to go out to somebody that was with somebody that you knew she was with somebody at some point. Right? Uh-huh. But I was calling her. She didn't call me back. Dang, you had done all the damage you was going to do then. I'm pretty sure by that time, Destiny had heard about it on the blogs, too. What you calling me for now? We ain't friends, remember? I don't bought things for her. What you buying things for, for her for? Huh? I don't buy stuff for people that I... And I tweak them. Shoot. If you my friend... I'm going to do what I can for you. But I tell you what I don't do. Somebody that I'm building a friendship with, I'm so not going to buy them nothing. <laughs> now, now to see Kiki over there acting like she is Elma Fudd to uh, Mel's Bugs Bunny. Now, we all know that, uh, <laughs> Even though Elma Fudd was the hunter, Bugs Bunny outsmarted Elma Fudd every time. It's really sad to see. I know you mad at me. I know I'm the last person you wanted to see. Because Mel is over there doing her thing. You know, she getting ready to put out some of her, her hits, right? This last hit, I can't think of the name of anything. What is it? Don't ask me nothing. Don't tell me nothing. Anyway, I like the song. Anything about Martell and dragging him and his peanut head, I'm cool with it. So that is what it is on that. I am so sorry, Millie. It was me. I done went down there and I told my mother some things about you. I felt slighted, as you should have. The whole damn cat slighted you. I bet you wasn't expected to be slighted to some, from somebody that had brought you on the show to help them bring down their cubs. I bet you I, I would have felt slighted too. And then standing around the fireplace and everybody talking about kiki, 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 kiki. And even the person that invited you on the trip, Nail, was all acting like you was a pariah. Yeah, I understand being slighted. I would have felt that way too. Somebody who I consider a friend from. Mm-hmm. See, this is where that unpopular opinion coming in is. Now, Kiki, this is why I agree with you again. You can call your mother to her shoot. I probably would call my mom. Don't think I want to call my mom on a huge trip, but all my friends and the friend who technically said she didn't invite me but indirectly invited me, <laughs> slighted me. Of course I would have called her if she was with us on the earth. But... This is where I grew a man. Then how come he didn't come to me? Yeah. That's what Mel is right at. Right there. <laughs> she, she is correct. You should have came with her first. Of course, after your mother. I don't have any, I don't see any problem with you going to your mother. She says, well, I don't like to have information from the show leak. Now, mind you again, everybody has done it. Kiki's not the first, but I guess because she's secondary class cast, I guess she's the only one who can't leak information. I don't think it's right for any of them to leak information. Don't get it twisted. However, she ain't the only one. That's my point. So Kiki says that she don't like confrontation. She said, girl, I don't believe you don't like confrontation. Not the way you threw that drink in her face unprovoked. I wouldn't say it wasn't unprovoked. She might have ignored her at that moment. But if somebody's running around town calling me a drug addict and I know I'm clean, oh, I wouldn't say I'm unprovoked. That go to unpopular opinion again. <laughs> Not too bad, but you... Now I heard a lot about what you feel. I'm going to tell you what I feel. I'm not going to let you take food out of my children's mouth. This is my way of earning my money. Uh-uh, not according to your fans. Stop now. Stop right there. This ain't your only way, right? 
We all know that you got other means of making money. So all your fans, the extreme ones, want you to leave the show. So you can show them that you can make money off your other streams of income. I like to see that myself. I like to see it. So I probably would have said this is one of my many streams of income. Because this ain't taking food off your children's plate, right? Because you have all those other avenues. Because we can say, is the show your main avenue now? By saying what you said? I'm just saying. An apology coming after the fact, it don't move me. Uh Uh-uh. No, no, no. Remember, we all Christians. An apology is an apology. It doesn't matter what part of the apology comes. Does it? At, at what point? We supposed to forgive and forget all the time. I'm not Christian, so I, I don't believe all this look. Now, again, I've already told you uh, that Scorpio energy overtook that Christianity energy right in this moment because Scorpios don't hardly forgive you for anything. However, <laughs> Kiki is also a Scorpio, which is really surprised to me about how she just falling all up on her sword right now. I guess that's the one her want to be on this show. And again, Kiki, for you, I'm saying, if you are as smart as you say you are, and you said you're the smartest thing on this show, girl, show us. Come up with your own show. Girl, matter of fact, with my little thousand subscribers, I'm pretty sure you can get bringing at least 250 start, maybe 500 start. Just re- recapping the show. Do that. I mean, you have the voice for it. You, girl, you was a professor. You could talk your way out of a paper bag. I could see that. I told you. You started talking private to the bloggers. Anthony Loftus. And you didn't listen. Now, mind you, Letitia, Kimmy, and even a whole lot of other people that she brought on the show had done much, much worse to her than Kiki has, but that's neither here nor there. I guess because Kiki won a part of the core six, because that Marceau, <laughs> that Marceau, he stayed dragging so I don't know how that came about. And then, by the way, Carlos didn't pick any other people that she originally came up with, because my understanding Kiki and I mean were one of the original couples that she came up with. Again, Kiki, you can do better. Girl, girl you don't have, you don't need this show. I told you when you threw that drink in and your half-talking cousin's face to go do something else and, and, and quit kissing these folks on this damn show ass. That includes Melody. Uh-huh. Yes. Like I said, quit. I can't stand to see nobody brought. <clears throat> nobody. I don't care who they do. So... As soon as she said that I don't have room for you in my space, I would pick my little phone up and my little purse up as a Scorpio that you are as well and walk my ass clean on out the door and chunked up to do stuff with me like, this is girl, I understand. I'm out. You don't accept my apology. Okay, fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm out. <laughs> you know? And we would be a square. God bless you on your journey, girl. Whatever she chooses to do going forward is fine with me. I just don't have no room for that in my life right now. Now, like I said, I just wonder what Dwayne thinks. I wonder, does Dwayne say to herself, now, I've been friends with both of these ladies for over 20 years, and I'm not going to choose between them. I'm just going to be one of their friends? Or do you say, well, I just don't like the way Mel treated her at the end of this episode, knowing that we were all friends together, so I'm not going to be friends with Mel. Because the way you don't care. Like I said, <laughs> that one friend that you probably won't see on this show is the way. Because both Mel and Kiki have said the way love each of them, but she don't love that show. Because she thinks that it's making, because she knows Tisha as well. She thinks it's making all of them look like a fucker. So she just don't, she just don't do it. Have you ever seen the way on the show? 
Do you ever hear them mention her name other than in the social media? <laughs> Child, that's neither here nor there. That's going to close for me at the end of the episode. Tell me what you think. Like, comment, subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell button so you can be notified when I upload a video. And let's get those likes up. Get me out there in the algorithm. Like I said, I only need about a thousand more um, watch time hours to get monetized. And maybe when I tell you those watch time hours, like tick, like seconds, poop, 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 not seconds, uh-uh. No, long ass hours. Poop, poop, poop. <laughs> Again, like, comment, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell button so you can be notified when I upload a video. And with that, as I do, I almost forgot my own clothing because I, when I tell you, I've been 60. <laughs> 60. Okay. <laughs> um, I hopefully, I, at some point this week, I'll be able to do New Jersey and, um, Martha's Vineyard, but I, I don't really get the numbers on Martha's Vineyard, but I do get the numbers on New Jersey, and that's surprising. I never would have thought that I would get those numbers on New Jersey, but that's neither here nor there. And as I do when I close, I'm gonna talk about Deuces.